Thank you so much for joining us on this special edition, on location edition of the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson, and on today's episode, we are not just going to be talking in Costa Rica, we're going to be talking to a real Costa Rican. But before I get to that, I want to welcome to the show someone you guys have seen before. He's been on the Good Fight Radio Show, he's been on 511 News, he's also done interviews for us on the streets, specifically on our series on pornography. And if you guys haven't checked that out yet, I want to encourage you guys to please check that out. In fact, Last last night and the night or no the night before actually we had a brother in Christ find out that we were out here in Costa Rica because he watched the live version of our series on pornography exposing Satan's link in pornography. I want to encourage you guys to check that out. And he found out we were in Costa Rica and drove all the way here and had to drive all the way back at 4 a.m. And so guys, you are blessed, and I ask that you guys would check that out and be blessed by it. But before I do, I wanna introduce to you our brother in Christ, a fellow Good Fight Ministries worker, Nico Hanessian, welcome to the show. God bless you guys, thank you, brother. Praise God, and also with us today, really the guy who set up this entire trip, our brother in Christ, who, is, I mean, he knew my wife before he before I knew my wife. He knew Pastor Joe before I knew Pastor Joe. Done missions with them, been in the states with them, and now we have come all the way out to Costa Rica to serve along uh, to serve Christ alongside of our brother David Villalobos. Thank you very much, Chad. It's a pleasure to be here. God bless you all. Well, you know what? I'm I'm really excited to be able to sit down and we've been trying to do this for a number of days. We've been doing a ton of work here in Costa Rica. We've been out on the streets. We've been going door to door to people's houses. We've been going down to what's called the Hako Walk and sharing the gospel there, I'm trying to do that everywhere. But also we've been doing a four day conference. And I think that a lot of people on from the Good Fight Radio show that listen to this show that are involved want to know what is it like in Costa Rica spiritually? Just what are we looking at in terms of the types of people, maybe the types of witnessing opportunities, the people to share with here in Costa Rica? And I guess if I could summarize the question, uh, what is the spiritual climate like in Costa Rica? Yeah, sure, Chad. Um, well, basically, we got a lot of influence uh, from America, from the States. Uh, so we have a lot of pros prosperity, um, gospel, churches and uh, even if you're not prosperity um, you're influenced by it so you got things like um, um, like you have to tithe otherwise you're against God's law um, also you have the whole uh, declare thing you know I declare I command even you're not if you're not prosperity you get that kind of stuff in like different churches so um, I would say there are like soft Pentecostal churches that are like still prosperity. Um, in other lines, for, for example, we have in Hako, right in Hako, um, where you guys are witnessing, we have the Jesus only people, which, which is pretty bad. Um, and they're most on the, on the coast, on the south coast of Costa Rica, the Pacific coast. Um, if you go to the Central Valley, or, which is pretty much where the most population of Costa Rica, uh, you got a lot of um, purpose-driven churches, so they're teaching the Bible for you to be good in the earth, you know, like they're not teaching like stuff to prepare you for eternity. They're teaching stuff to prepare you for here. So if you're not uh, prospering your life physically, mentally with your family, uh, then that's a proof that you're not good with the Lord, you know. So we got a lot of variety of beliefs here and just a few churches that are Bible-believing churches. Yeah, I think that's really incredible, and I hopefully, you know, for our audience to, to hear that, they may not know, you know, some of that, but some of it may be common. In a lot of uh, Latin American countries, it seems like uh, Satan has sent those prosperity preachers a lot to come after people, especially those who are looking for money and wanting, wanting that wealth, and inf instead of giving them the true gospel of Jesus Christ, they give them this lie. But you know what? You know, you have, it, it's so awesome to have a brother in Christ here in Costa Rica who has his hands at the plow here and to hear about that. But I would love for them to hear and go as long or as short as you want on this. I'd love for them to hear how you came to Christ. How did David Villalobos come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> um. Well, it's a long story. I won't, I won't tell the whole story, but basically I can say um, 
I got I got Mary. I was born first of all in a Christian family, but just like most Christian families here, uh, just go to church. Like they don't teach you like a real relationship with the Lord, you know. So um, I grew up there. By the time I was in high school, I started doing drugs, drinking alcohol, even with my Christian friends, which it was pretty much during my whole youth, you know, from like, let's say 14 all the way to till I was like 25. Um, during that time, I always played at uh, the uh, Christian worship team, you know, in my church. Um, I met uh, my girlfriend, my wife, um, and basically we, we got divorced uh, due to um, adultery, right? She, uh, she went away, she got married with, uh, with a guy, she cheated on me, and I got in depression. Um, before that, I, it's when I met uh, Pastor Joe and Holly and the whole Blessed Hope team, which it was a blessing for me. You know, at that time I could see even if I was, I wasn't following the Lord, you know, at that time, but I could see uh, there was something different. You know, things I didn't see in my church, things I didn't see in school with Christian friends, I could see they were different. So I really caught my attention and, and it was beautiful because uh, they were like very, uh, helpful and honest and uh, saying uh, always worshiping God and I wasn't used to that so I caught my attention so right away I went to California I visited you guys I stayed there for like six months uh, and when I came back it's when I uh, met my wife got married uh, and got divorced so right after I, um, I got divorced I was in depression for like three years uh, three years in depression really bad getting drunk, uh, uh, smoking marijuana, and uh, just partying all the time. You know, um, when I realized in my room um, that I wasn't supposed to do that, I still wanted to sin and, and do all of these, like party and, and, and get drunk, but I wasn't supposed to do that. Like I knew, like God was convicting me uh, that that wasn't right for me, you know? so. Um, I knew no pastors here that could help me. I actually tried a couple of pastors and they were saying like, uh, yeah, you just need to quit doing that. You just need to focus on your work, on your family, uh, your daughter, your job, even Christian people. So um, I remember Pastor Joe. I remember Pastor Joe and I, um, all there was at the, at the moment, there was no podcast or anything. Uh, so I just um, put it on YouTube. Like Pastor Joe Shimel's teaching, and I started seeing how um, how different he preached from what I was used to. You know, uh, your conduct has to be according to the word. Like it t it talks like way a lot of times more about conduct than uh, faith in the in the New Testament. So um, that's how I um, I started like growing back in the word and really believing in, 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 the, in the God of the Bible. So that was wonderful for me because at the same time, I had to get rid of all this bad doctrine, doctrine I had because I used to believe that you could not lose your salvation, you know? So I was living my life based on a lie yeah. and I was sinning and doing horrible things because I was told you can do anything you want and not lose your salvation. You know, and that's pretty big here, Chad. So um, I guess that, that's long. Um, I could I could add that uh, it was a blessing for my life and I have starting like living my life based on the Bible and it's a growth, right? So little by little, I became closer to God and closer to the Bible and um, and farther away from my life of sin, which is beautiful. Yeah, I went from a slave of sin to a slave of righteousness. Amen. You know? And it's, it's really interesting because I, I hadn't even told you this yet, but, you know, I, I was running all of the, the, the ministry pages and I would get message from a guy in my mind named David uh, via Labos, you know, in my head. And then one day I was uh, I saw my wife's Facebook page and I'm like, oh, you're friends with that guy, David. I've talked to him a number of times uh, about doctrines. He's asked questions before. She's like. That's David, our, my friend from Costa Rica I told you about. <laughs> and it, I connected the dots. I was like, oh my gosh, he's been talking to us for a while, you know. And it's really cool, you know, to then, you know, because she always cared about you, always prayed about you, you know. 
Uh, and if you guys don't know, Holly is my wife, who is Joe's daughter. And so she's always had a passion wanting to come back to Costa Rica. And within maybe an hour of being here, I understood why. Wanting and loving the people, wanting to share the gospel with the people uh, of Costa Rica. And, you know, maybe we could talk a little bit also um, because you mentioned some of these doctrines that are very prevalent here in Costa Rica. And I guess it's more of an open question, but maybe you could maybe, you know, I don't know, give us an analysis of how is it that you go after to share the gospel, to bring someone out of that, uh, what is it, no pure uh, doctrina, right? Not the pure doctrine, right? How do you get someone to come out of those things? And I'm sure it's different, can, you know, depends on the, you know, the religion and so forth that they're following. Right. Um, so basically, in my experience, uh, since I started, um, I went back to uh, the church. I used to I used to play guitar. So um, basically, my my whole ministry is based on the relationships I have with with the people. Like I really wanted to go back to that church because I really care about the people in, in that church, specifically in, in my town. So um, I went back uh, there. I play soccer, so I, I got friends uh, that play soccer as well. I invite them over to the church and to the Bible study. Um, I do have family that are like very Catholic and, and that's very hard to, um, especially if your family, it's very hard to, hard to witness to them because they say, hey, you know, you're David, you're like uh, the little guy, the guy, the younger cousin, like we don't really care about you, you know, <laughs> but then <clears throat> You, you start uh, talking about the Bible and they notice that you know the Bible and, and they don't. Like, it's, it's hard for them not to compare that. Like, and they would say, okay, I don't know anything about the Bible and this guy knows a lot about the Bible and histories of the Bible, you know. So, um, like, if you're a local, it's really hard um, just to go out there because people will, like, look down on you like you're weird, you know. So I, in, in one, um, one thing, it's really important that everyone comes here, you know, that, that there are foreigners that come here because that's like a catch for people, mm. as, as you guys could see, you know, um, you guys walked in, in Hako and people was interested, like, what, what are you doing here? Why are you walking here and not on the beach like everyone else? Why are you talking to me and not getting drunk like everyone else? So people notice that. And I believe that's very important, right? But in our case, in our case, you have to you have to be known and even like try harder, right? You have to uh, establish a relationship with people, give an example, because because they also believe that that you're just like them, because regular Christians they don't go out of their church. Basically, what they would just do is uh, go to a park. Uh, offer to pray for people, you know, and not not even give out the gospel. Oh, wow. You know, you, you have your shirt, your logo your for your church and uh, not share the gospel. Just pray for people, maybe tell them that Jesus loves them and uh, and that's it. So going back to my, the, the way I, I do it is I, I go and establish relationships and then people like God brings the people you know so I've started this uh, this home group um, and we have like uh, six or seven people but most of the people that has come uh, just two people are Catholic right or were Catholic and they accepted the Lord um, but most of the people are Christians with back doctrine you know and they, they come up with questions and say hey what about this like I've never heard that teaching before. I never, I never heard like uh, Romans nine interpreted that way or Romans eleven, you know, with with the whole Calvinism thing, you know, because oh they they do teach that a lot here. Oh, wow. So um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, praise the Lord. Um, again, we just wanted to thank you guys for watching. It's an incredible view, as you guys can see. And if you can't tell, um, the sun is beating us down. And um, we love the Lord's creation and, and it's incredible, but sometimes the Lord humbles us and that's his, that's his incredible son that, that's, that's getting us sweating a little bit. Uh, but but we're having a great to it. time. You'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> we're having a great time. Um, so you were, you were just mentioning um, that group that you started. You started a little home fellowship and you're ministering uh, to a certain group of people. Uh, did you want to touch on that, that age group roughly? If there is one, a certain age group that you're ministering to? Yes. It's, it's young adults. Young adults. Yeah. Yeah. It goes from 20 to like 35. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I've had the, the pleasure back at home to be able to just be a part of and serve alongside the young adults group. And the one at Blessed Hope was one, you know, that I've, I've never experienced before. It was a group of, you know, young men and women who truly who truly love the Lord, who care about obedience, and um, who strive to live a, a holy life. But I could tell you that that wasn't something that I was used to. And I know you shared a little bit uh, about your testimony and you were sharing with me. Um, and so something that was, was new to me was that, that, that exact idea of living that, that you know, integral Christian lifestyle because I was a part of I was a part of church, many churches going in and out of different churches who didn't stress these core doctrines such as the holiness of God, such as the fear of God. And I had an incredible opportunity to be able to share with the locals here about the holiness of God. Um, and I just wanted to ask and really touch on something like the holiness of God. What are certain, certain key doctrines that should be preached that aren't being preached? in the the true church here or or that's maybe even lacking in the true church here in costa rica yes and um i do wanted to mention that it, that was an amazing teaching you did the other day at the church so i do thank you very much for that um well true doctrines for for holiness um that's not even preached in a lot of places and even when they preach that it's very shallow mm -hmm. you know so uh, they don't go on on the attributes of God and they use more uh, what can God do to make your life easier here, you know, and it's very hard to find a church that talks about the attributes of God. I mean, I found it. Um, there is a, I found a couple, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and there is a, a podcast um, I, I listen to and the, the guys are from Costa Rica and they're pretty solid about the holiness of God. But when when i uh, when i was looking for churches because at the beginning i didn't want it to go back to that church so i believe also it was the lord leading me back to the church i i grow um what i used to go uh i went all throughout heredia which is my hometown looking for churches like i can tell you like 90 percent of, of the churches and i went for like three months every sunday to a, dif a different church mm -hmm. so i went to a lot of churches like 90 percent of the churches were like either prosperity churches or like purpose-driven churches uh nothing like s solid doctrinally right so um people need to just go back to to the word of god to making sense of it like Nehemiah 8.8 8, you know like the formula is the same people are just trying to do new things and new things you know to attract people and stuff but the formula is the same give sense to the words don't don't lose the meaning don't lose the purpose and uh, and 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 the will of God by giving us um, the instructions on the Bible you know so uh, yeah I would say like go back to 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 who God is, you know, His plan, salvation, the holiness of God. And um, I heard uh, the, the other day, it's like uh, uh, faith gives the, the fruit automatically, holiness. You know, it's like uh, two coins, right? I mean, one coin, two, two sides. Yeah. Two sides. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have faith, you do good works, you stay holy, you keep being holy. Intense. Yeah. Amen. And with that being said, and this is something we were talking about that both affected um, our walks and our testimonies is all growing up in, in a large majority of or a large majority of middle school and high school, I was really left without um, a discipler, mm -hmm. someone to take me in and really walk me through 
not only what the Bible says, but really live it out to where I could see it as in a living example and then follow after. We know Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Uh, do you see uh, discipleship, true discipleship as something lacking here in Costa Rica? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, there is there is a kind of discipling that's going on here and it's more it's based more on activities you know like we're gonna bring you in we're gonna throw out a party for you guys uh, we're gonna eat and stuff which is not bad you know but it's just to keep you around not really seeing like how do you live in the university how do you live in your high school how do you act with your family how do you be be behave i mean are you really following the lord outside of the this circle of church you know um, another aspect of discipling it's uh, keeping people accountable you know they don't want to talk about like hard um, topics like difficult topics you know like are you sexually pure are you keeping sexually pure are you um, like pornography you know like a lot of people here is like they all watch pornography like I, I heard the other day that Pornhub it's huge in Costa Rica, like the, the, the pornographic page. Um, and it's crazy because a lot of them were even pastors. Oh. Were even pastors. So it's it's crazy and people don't talk about it, you know? So uh, that's that's really painful. And, and we need to work on our younger people, you know, because the, the way you preached the other day, Chad, and, uh, and, and well, you mentioned it as well. Um, Satan is going after the young people, after the kids with all of this. And we're not attacking or putting out the shield of faith in front of our kids. We're just letting the darts go through. Yeah, I think one of the interesting things you bring up Pornhub is the fact that so many people are ignorant of, of the fact that they think that sex trafficking, this wicked, evil thing that is happening in our world today that is so common, sadly, they think that that's separate from the porno pornographic industry. But the problem is, is they don't realize that when they think of sex trafficking, trafficking, they think of the movie Taken, where it's this one girl that is stolen and then taken into this one place and is sold, you know, to a bunch of rich sickos, right? But really, the most money that is made on that porno on, on sex trafficking is filming those girls and exploiting them. And a lot of that is made off of Pornhub. And so a lot of pastors, as you mentioned, sadly, a lot of people uh, are literally funding sex trafficking. When they press click, they're taking their Bibles or they'll take their, their phones, they'll look at their Bible app, read their daily verse, and then use that same phone to look at pornography later. And this is, I believe, the judgment of God is coming, you know, and that's something that we need to be mindful of. And I, you know, we've been praying so much about our trip for months. We've been fasting and praying. Nico knows that. Nick behind the camera, Josh behind the camera today. We had, we're fasting and praying about walking up to people and that God would give us specific people that we were supposed to talk to. And I know you've had some awesome witnessing encounters while we've been here. Nico has as well. And it was really cool because what we ended up doing was separating our groups to our Spanish translators. So it was really cool because even the pastor whose church we've been preaching at was out there doing the work of an evangelist like scripture calls us to. And it was so much fun to go out and share the gospel with these different groups. We had a different translator. Nico had a different translator. You were translating for my wife and her mom and, and a couple others as well. So maybe we can all talk, and, and I don't mind telling a story too, and Nico and yourself, uh, maybe tell, tell about an, an evangelistic encounter that happened here in Costa Rica on this trip specifically. On this trip. Do you want me to start? Yeah, have at it. Okay, yeah. great. So, uh, yeah, last, uh, it was a couple of days ago. Uh, we we walked down and there was this lady uh, from uh, Parrita, which is a town right next to Jaco, and she was sitting on the front porch with her two kids, beautiful kids. Uh, they were barefoot and everything. She was just sitting on a rocking chair there. And uh, Holly and I came up to her and we started talking. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, she was very open to hear what what Holly had to say. I was I was translating for Holly. 
So um, she, they, they're very poor and stuff, and and that's uh, that's an aspect also when when you evangelize. People that are poor are more willing to to hear you, you know, at, at least here in Costa Rica. The, uh, I guess if they have a need, they also have a an spiritual need as well. So um, she was she was very open from the beginning, and uh, as soon as we said it, uh, as soon as as Holly said it, like, do you want to pray and accept the Lord? She smiled. She smiled and say yes, yes I do. Uh, so uh, Holly just said, okay, take over, explain, pray with her, you know, and uh, explain farther. So uh, I started explaining like, this is the gospel, right? Not, not, not just that Jesus loves you, but you have, to, you're dead, and 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 Christ is offering you like life, you know. And, uh, and and we gotta walk in faith by the basis of his word and, and trust in him and so we can have eternal life, you know? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I, I want to, I want to. And uh, one funny thing is that uh, when, when we're like almost wrapping up, she said like, so where do I go? What church? <laughs> you know, like, where, where do I go? Like, can I give you not my number? Uh, are you gonna be the pastor or who is gonna, you know, be my fellowship now, you know? So I, I got her number, I already gave it to um, Pastor Greiner, which is the pastor we're working with. And uh, it was uh, her and her two kids, you know, that accepted the Lord. That's incredible. Um, no, I, I did have one that I would love to share, but even before I do that, some of the greatest stories that I know I can even from this day reflect on as just some incredible moments from here in Costa Rica is our conversations and the conversations with our other translators. And these are brothers that we just met and yet it feels like, you know, we've known each other for forever and it's an incredible thought. And there is this faithful remnant around the world who loves the Lord. And this is one of our encouragements is get out there and serve and bring the gospel to all nations and meet these people. I know I could just think in my mind, people from many different countries and states that I love with all my heart that I've only met for a, a, you know, a short amount of time, just faithful brothers and sisters in the church. Um, and so again, we encourage you in that. But one of the ones I wanted to share was uh, my group, and we had an amazing brother Juarez translating for us. And as we're making our way down in, in the slums portion of Costa Rica in the rainforest, it was incredible. We'd come across this lady and we began sharing the gospel with her. And we get into the point of faith, believing in the work of Jesus Christ. And often, if you even have gotten there, you know, sometimes there's not much left to share. And often that's all people really know about the gospel. And so we had the incredible opportunity to dig a little deeper. And what we were sharing was this idea of, again, this it's the, this picture of baptism. You've, you've died with Christ and then you've raised with him. And this is all incorporated in becoming born again, being a true believer. But first you have to die to, with Christ. You have to die to what? Die to your sin. And so we just shared with her a simple verse that we encourage you guys all to memorize. It's John 3, 36. He who believes in the son has eternal life, uh, but he who does not obey the son does not have the life, um, but the wrath of God abides on him. And the Bible goes on to say, you know, if you do not bear fruit, you will be broken off. And this is what this is what he was saying. It's this fruit of our faith brings forth works. And so I'm sharing this verse with her. And, you know, we, we had incredible brother Chad walking us through first Peter, memorizing verses. And one of them was first Peter two verses 24 and 25. Um, he bore our sins on the cross in his body so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. That's the heart of Christ for us when we receive salvation is to die to sins, die to our sins and live to Christ. And so we're just explaining this to her. And she was so taken back at this idea of faith and obedience and how they're both important, both interchangeable. Faith and repentance as two sides of the coin, like he was saying. Um, and she was just amazed. And she said to us, I, I've never heard that before, even as a Christian. She said, I've never heard that before. And it's powerful, but it's also a sobering thought. 
to make sure, one, we ourselves know the true and full gospel, the whole counsel of God, and then also that we are preaching the whole counsel of God. There are many people who don't know the whole counsel of God, who are left with this first portion, this faith, which leads to free grace, I profess and then I can live however I want, versus the emphasis of obedience like he was talking about throughout the scriptures. And so we got to share that with her, share holiness with the church, walking in holiness and and pursuing sanctification uh, because the Bible says a holiness without which no one could see the Lord and we want to see the Lord we want to know the Lord and we want others to to know the true Lord and have a real experience with him well how do we do that we share the whole gospel we don't half our gospel so that we give him a half salvation amen so that one just touched my heart but it's also quite sad and uh, again that's another um, encouragement to you preach the whole gospel be faithful to that yeah, amen. You know, I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, it's so weird because I was sitting here thinking, oh, man, there was a lot of really cool stories we shared with a guy for over an hour yesterday, Nico, myself, and also Nick behind the camera shared specifically with this one guy yesterday. Um, you know, I got to share alongside my wife with another guy who literally had a joint in his hand, but ended up for some great conversation and hopefully some conviction. But one specific guy was actually one of the first people I ran into here when we were out on the streets. And I had my brother, Angel Dominguez. He's an elder at the church down in the Blessed Hope Chapel in Mexico, Ensenada. And he was here uh, translating for me. And I just walked up to the guy and I said, hey, man, do you got a second? You know, and he said, yeah, yeah, I have a second. I'm like, we're walking in the middle of the street. What happens if you get hit by a bus, you know, and you die? And he's like, oh. What's wrong with this guy, you know? <laughs> That's been kind of quick, you know? But uh, ended up with a great conversation because we got to bring him through what we call the good person test. And a lot of you guys know that. Um, you know, we asked somebody how many lies you told in your whole life and so forth. And this man actually is from a Catholic background. And one of the great things about being out in Costa Rica right now, even though a lot of the restrictions for COVID are really strong here uh, in terms of wearing your mask everywhere, uh, businesses shut down at 9 p.m., curfew for the for driving until I think what last week I think you weren't even allowed to drive uh, on certain days depending upon if you were an otter even on your license plate so their restrictions here were actually stronger than any restrictions that we had in the states while we were here but while that could feel like a curse it's a blessing in the sense that so many of the Catholic churches are closed here and we praise God for that because then we were able to talk to so many and give them the true gospel and for this man specifically one of the things I love to point out is the fact that when Jesus Christ died, not only did he say to tell us die, paid in full, that our debt has been paid for on the cross and that we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and that our works, although they're, they're something that comes alongside when we are saved and have a new heart and a new mind with new desires and new thoughts, he gives us that new heart and the spirit within us and bears the fruits of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and then we begin bearing fruit and keeping with repentance all of that is true but none of those things are the things by which i am saved it is jesus christ's death burial and resurrection it is the fact that jesus christ died for me and that he was my sins were paid in full on the cross but i said you know what else happened it's like there was a great earthquake and actually, in the book of Hebrews, it tells us that it was Jesus who was torn, speaking of him as if he is the veil, but that the veil was torn. And that now, and specifically, I'm sure you guys understand where I'm going with this, speaking with Catholics, thinking they need to go to a priest and, and ask him for forgiveness. And he gives them a certain qualification of how many Hail Marys and so forth to get out of their venial and mortal sins and whatever it may be. Um, and when he does this, then they can be forgiven. And, and confessing their sins to a specific priest, I said, what's great about salvation in Christ is that we actually believe historically what happened, that Jesus Christ died, there was an earthquake, and that the veil in the temple was torn in two. And so now we get to go directly into the Holy of Holies, and this is the promise that Jesus gave in John 4.4 4, to the woman at the well that was wondering, that Samaritan woman wondering where the men, of, men and women of God were supposed to worship God. And he said that it's going to be anywhere, basically. It's not going to be on this, this place and this place or that place. It's going to be any p people who want to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I got to share that with him, and he was another person who said, you know what, I, I need this salvation as well. And he wanted to receive Christ as well right then and there in the middle of the 
the road and praise God we didn't get hit by a bus. But nonetheless, uh, guys, this is so awesome because before we came out here, we had a brother named Mauricio, which is the same name of, as our driver. Uh, but we had a brother named Mauricio uh, from our fellowship in New York. And he had said to us, man, it is ripe there. There's so much fruit to be had in Costa Rica. People need the gospel and they're afraid of COVID-19. They're afraid of not, they haven't, some haven't been to church in well over a year. They're afraid. And this is a great time to come and share the gospel with them. And I got to be honest, I have, I have felt that uh, to be true. And I have felt that this has been awesome. Uh, it's been amazing. We did a, a four days of a conference really, because we came, we had Nico was one of the speakers that, that spoke uh, on the first day as well as Tommy and Angel. And then the next two days we did a, uh, a they sold the souls for rock and roll presentation here that I was able to do. And guys, I just want you to please keep Pastor Joe in prayer. He did hurt his leg literally the week before we were trying to come and it made him unable to come because you guys know we've been walking a lot <laughs> around out here and his Achilles he had such a big blister. He'd be embarrassed if I showed you how big it was on the back of his leg, uh, how, how, how horrible it was. But one of the things was we do believe that it was it was the Lord working because he's been able to stay home and for two full weeks have his sermons, other people preaching his sermons for him and also me doing the presentation out here and leading the trip for him. So he's been able to rest and hopefully get some work done on Marvel, which we hope to come out soon. But going back a little bit to David. Now, David, you have uh, a little bit of a plan of something you want to do. And we were able to, you know, by the grace of God, be able to come bless you um, with some materials so that you'd be able to do this. But there is something that you are hoping to start right here in Costa Rica. And, and what is that? Let, let everyone know what it is. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, basically, um, they bless me, I guess, through you all as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with the podcast equipment so it's gonna be called Pura Biblia Pure Bible and uh, I'm hoping to start something similar to what you guys have in Good Fight Ministries we'll see what the Lord is, uh, does but um, we're gonna start with that with a podcast it's called Pura Biblia and it's gonna be like pretty much the Latin version of what you guys have and uh, from there I don't know what the Lord's going to do because uh, he's bringing people like what is the translator? He's a web designer Amen. and uh, he already offered himself to to help me out with whatever I need for for meeting and stuff. Um, Patrick as well is a lot of help. Um, and the guy we just met, Isaac, uh, he said, hey, I'm willing to help you with anything you need. So um, that's wonderful. And uh, that's all I have planned for right now. But I don't know what the Lord's going to bring. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared, but um, no, we'll no, see. Yeah, the Lord is our strength, you know. He doesn't bring us a spirit of fear, you know, but of a sound mind. And I know you have that, and I think that's beautiful because, you know, one of the things you talk about Isaac, you know, you talk about Juarez, you know, you talk about Patrick, and that the Lord is bringing all these guys here. And one of the things when you when you read in, in the New Testament, um, when you read specifically First Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus, uh, you see that, for example, in Titus, Paul tells Titus, you know, to appoint elders, you know, in their provinces. Uh, specifically, I believe part of the reason being is that a shepherd is somebody that is has sheep there of his own fold. And I think that they go there and they're a part of that community and they help to bring the people of that community into a greater relationship with the Lord. And somebody like me, if somebody goes, oh, I, I you know, maybe I feel... The Lord is calling me to Costa Rica. I'm like, well, can you speak Spanish? Well, no. Can you communicate with anyone? Well, no. I'm like, well, where, where is this calling coming from? Not that you can't learn those things, but I think that a lot of times, one of the great things, and hopefully, you know, Good Fight Ministries is, you know, one of the means by which God uses is to say, wait a second, there's people right here in Costa Rica already, and these people need the gospel. It's not like we need to move David and please come to the States because we need you here at the church, but hey, wait a second, God can use you right here where you are and we believe that scripture is true <laughs> obviously he says pure biblia right and uh you say pure vida here yeah pure life uh that's like the saying here and you know we believe in pure doctrina right pure doctrine right and it comes from the word of god and that's what gives you the pure life amen and when it comes to being able to share here in the united states or here in costa rica 
with somebody who's already here, it is what I believe the Lord wants. Uh, and I believe that is a lot of times what the Lord is trying to do is he's going to put you right where you are. And maybe, you know, you're wondering in yourself, oh, Lord, what ministry do you have for me? And it's like, well, have you ever opened your door and looked outside? It's right there. You know, we've, Nico already mentioned, we went through First Peter. Uh, we've been going through First Peter. We still have chapter five in the morning. But uh, we talked about in verse in chapter four, specifically when it talks about all the desires of the Gentiles and that that time has passed that you should have already been running in those. But now you've come to Christ, you shouldn't be running in those because the previous chapters talk about us being a slave to Christ, a righteousness now, a slave to Christ, a slave to righteousness. And specifically the things that it mentions, so many of them, sensualities, lust, drinking parties, and other abominable idolatries. We're out here in Costa Rica, we're in Haco, reading the, these verses and saying, just turn around. It's all right here. And instead of doing those things, we say, let's be exactly like the Apostle Paul was, like the early church, where they saw the wickedness that was going on around them. And Paul said that his spirit, when he was in Athens, was stirred within him and that we should be stirred. And it should, we should not, we should still blush when we see sin. We should, still should get to the place where we say, this is wickedness and it's shameful that I even have to expose it, but I will by in the, in the name of Christ. But these are just awesome stories. And I, and I love it because we're talking specifically, obviously with our brother in Christ, David Villalobos. And I have today special guest Nico Anessian with me as well as, as Joe stays back and and hopefully the Lord continues to heal his foot so he's out running and, and walking and so forth. But but nonetheless, as 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 we as we finish up a little bit here, we we have some time to go. But you know, I want to talk not only about the podcast, but maybe just some of your vision for things that uh, we can be a part of as well, even if it's from the states or if it's us, you know, maybe coming out here more as well. Okay, well, um, I just got mentioned yesterday from from a couple ladies at the church. Uh, that you guys should come like every year. Oh! <laughs> so at least once a year, if you could do it, that'll be wonderful. And it'll be a blessing as well, because um, like Nico mentioned before, it feels like um, we've known each other for a long time, and, and that's definitely Christ, because we're, we're united in Christ, you know, and we have one faith, one Savior, and uh, it's wonderful to know that, you know, even though we we might may have different tastes in 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 music, food. sports, definitely food, <laughs> right? <laughs> we're all, we're all one in Christ, and because we believe the truth regarding that Christ, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, well, for the podcast, um, I want to reach out uh, to to different kinds of people. You know, I want to get the people that don't believe on a real um, gospel. To believe in the Bible believing gospel right in the true gospel of, of Jesus Christ while at the same time I want to reach out to unbelievers as well so I I might have different programs um, I'm still working on it I'm gonna try to find time sacrifice some other things maybe uh, like sleep or gym time <laughs> I don't know um, and uh, at the same time, I have to keep uh, discipling this group, the, the, the home group that I have. So um, we will see there is people being added to the group, like uh, one couple that just got saved um, about a month ago. Uh, they invited her mom to the Bible study, so she came. And uh, the house is small now. It's becoming smaller, you know. <laughs> so I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we, we gotta keep you know keeping everybody everyone together you know to keep discipling. So um, it's um, it's a blessing because uh, the first of all the um, Camilo is his name. He was the one the first one who got saved, and it was because there was a situation in uh, in the relationship of adultery. Mm, wow. So he came crying. And saying, I don't know what to do. You say, I've I wanna... been here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been here. So um, I basically said, it doesn't matter what you're going to do. It doesn't matter if you get back or if you don't get back. If you don't have Jesus Christ, that's not going to matter. You know? So he was kind of shocked because he was waiting for something that he wanted to hear. 
you know? And he was already trying to cheat on her. And he didn't that day, you I know? So um, he got saved. Uh, he went ahead and told his wife right away, I got saved. No way. I got saved, yeah. A week later, she was joining us as wow. well in, in the home group. And, uh, and I thought that was wonderful. You know, we didn't expect that. We didn't plan it. Um, I was in, in my friend's house, Juarez, and the guy just called, uh, Camilo just called him and say, hey, are you busy? I don't know what to do. And he came and I happened to be there and we talked to him for like, what was it, like four hours and we cried. I cried, you know, I cried. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, we, we cried together like brothers and, uh, and see, that puts a, like a burden in you, like a beautiful burden, because you're, you're worried about them. So you got to take care of them and, uh, and help them out. So right now I'm here with you guys at the beach for three weeks. And like I try to, to write him at least, uh, I don't know, every other two days, every, every couple of days, you know, see how he's doing and stuff, you know. So, um, yeah. And, and for you guys, uh, I do hope to stay in touch with you guys. Um, most of the things I've learned, it's because of you. Because I don't, we, we don't get that kind of material here in Costa Rica, you know, so. Yet. Until, yet, until yet. Until Pura Biblia. Pura Biblia. Yeah, <laughs> soon, soon we're going we're gonna to have that. We're going to have that material available for everyone here. And, uh, and one last thing, it's, um, I wish to get more material from you guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's no problem. That's no, no, no problema. But, um, you know, I know Nika wanted to ask something, but I had to say this. You know, we were just sitting having lunch here on this island, and it was so beautiful because Patrick was there. And you mentioned, uh, you know, your friend Camilo. Is that what you said? Camilo. Camilo, you mentioned him coming to Christ. But Patrick is one of our interpreters, but yeah, he's actually from the United States. And one of the cool things is, is that Patrick not only came to the Lord through you sharing the gospel with him, but we were just sitting here. I'm not exaggerating. This is five minutes before I walked over here. And the waiter here said, you guys must be Christians. He said there was something different. As started talking to a guy in our group, Tommy. And then he came up and started talking to Patrick. And then Patrick's like, oh, the one with the beard, you know. No, he's not Muslim, uh, you know, he's just because he has a beard. Uh, he said, the one with the beard. He, uh, he's the one who brought me to Christ and Patrick told him that, he brought you to, that you brought him to Christ and the guy was saying, just as you had mentioned earlier, that he was once a, a oneness, once a Jesus only in that cult as well. So I thought that was just so cool. So maybe uh, a, a short version of what it was that brought Patrick, who's one of our interpreters, to come to know the Lord with it you shared with him. Oh, Patrick. A uh, wonderful guy, yes, Patrick. Basically, he came here after he was he graduated from high school. He came running away from drugs, uh, sex, and the crazy life. And also, uh, well, his his family. You know, he he was running away from everything. Uh, he didn't have anywhere to go, and he came uh, to the Y1 base here. And he was going crazy because he said these crazy people, you know, like uh, he didn't want to have anything to do with them. I happened to be like renting the wood, the wood shop they have, you know, tools, um, saws, everything, because I, were work I was working on wood at that time. I worked there for like a year and uh, I saw him just sitting there by himself, you know, doing nothing, bored. Everyone was upstairs upstairs doing I don't know what and I started to talk to him and he said man you know like the Bible is not real I don't even believe in the Bible I don't even believe in God I don't know what I'm doing here so I started asking questions why doesn't he believe that and uh, I took him out to my house and we started talking regarding the Bible why is the true Word of God why is the 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 Bible the breath the, the words that us, yeah. the Theanustas the there you yeah. go the God breathed Bible and um, we talked for like a couple days and uh, he had no arguments later. He had no arguments whatsoever. So he said, I want to accept the Lord. Wow. I want to accept the Lord. Um, and we started talking and I started discipling him. He's now on his third year, 
I think he's done already with seminary wow. in, in university. And uh, one cool thing is that he said, like, I want to get baptized. <laughs> I want to get baptized. And I was like, I don't know. I, we don't have any water. So he came to Jaco, to a pastor in Jaco, in, in Iglesia Radical. And uh, they baptized him right away. And we're, we've been really close friends since, and we're still talking, and, and he's here. I mean, it's it's been like three years and something, and he's still growing, and he's helping me. Uh, and yeah, praise the Lord. Because the Bible is the Word of God. Because the Bible, <laughs> it is the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and I've had an absolute incredible time with Patrick. Yeah. Uh, he's been a huge blessing. But one thing I wanted to bring up in terms of, you know, kind of what, what Chad was asking. What can we do for the Church of Costa Rica? But just but just in general, one of the uh, the most impactful things during our time when we're on mission trips is our involvement and our time with the local church that we're serving with and that we're staying with. And so I don't want to say anything because I have some thoughts. But what do you think you have seen with um, the local church that we've been serving with, which is uh, Iglesia Cristiana Jaco. Uh, what have you seen in terms of the pastor alone and the fellowship and just the whole body um, with with our with our short time being here? Okay, so um, what what can you do in in that specific yeah. church? We, well, and I just want to touch on that because, and I'll kind of allude to it, but one it's been an incredible time and we've just been i've just seen a, a fire in in pastor greener and this excitement and even just the time with with um his congregation and, and the fellowship and all these things do we make an impact is there a sense of excitement or in terms okay. of missionaries coming to local churches and serving alongside of them yeah no that would be wonderful and now now that i do understand the question <laughs> yeah. i i can say a couple of things um th this pastor specifically um he was left he's left alone he's left alone there is a group of pastors around the area but they have prosperity preachers like prosperity churches uh they believe women can be pastoring a church and he said uh I, I talked to him he didn't talk to you guys but i know this because i've been dealing with him since i i've known him right in october uh he he was kicked out of that group or or they just push him aside because they say oh he's the pastor that doesn't believe you know in the charismania like yeah you know charismania charismania yeah <laughs> and he doesn't believe in women being pastors he doesn't believe in tithing you know he has his own business like airbnb apartments so he doesn't have to charge the church for his food his you know his support the the offerings he's got he gets it for the church because he has his own business his wife has his own business her own business you know um so in terms of having a relationship with other people it'll be very good if i mean if you guys are able to send out people to help him out you know to share with him um he really needs that because he's being pushed aside by by these other churches because of that and because also sadly with churches they have like social levels as well you know, you've seen his church. It's a nice big church, but it's not like other churches you can see around yeah, yeah. the area. And this this is a very rich area as well. You know, so if you don't have like a big church, like your word doesn't really matter, you know? Yeah, no, it's it's really interesting. And if you guys, I, I had never been to Costa Rica. So when people said, oh, you guys are going to Hako, are you going to a vacation? You know, I said, I, I have no idea what you mean by that. I've never been there. But where we would minister was far different from the first couple days than when we went to go share the gospel out closer to the beach in Hako because we were told right away, oh, guys, that's the rich area. They're probably not going to want to talk to you, but maybe their workers will. And that was typically the case when we went out there, which I found was interesting. But one of the things, you know, as Nico already brought this out, and I know we're, we're wrapping up on, on time here, but 
one of the things that was beautiful and I got to share with the congregation was the fact that the Bible does say that Paul did write to Timothy to do the work of an evangelist, that the pastor should be out, uh, the shepherd of that church uh, who God has appointed ultimately should be out sharing the gospel or they're derelict of their duties, so to speak. They're not doing what the Bible calls them to do. And it was so sweet to see them out and then to talk with his wife. I think that's one of the most important things. If you want to know anything about a leader in anything, I don't care if they're the head coach of something or they're the CEO of a company, go meet their family, meet their children. Uh, seeing his daughters worship the Lord, seeing them being so excited about the presentation, they sold their souls to rock and roll. Then talking with his wife last night and her telling us about how their old friends won't talk to them five years because she said, I'm not a pastor. The Bible said, and she said that to me. I was like, this is awesome. What a, what a blessing. And we didn't even talk to them. I mean, I didn't even talk to them regarding that specifically. But one of the things that I, I said this, and this happened when we were doing ministry as well, but with between churches, separate from just doing something with our own church, meeting with churches, we would speak at churches. And one of the great things was when we were involved with, the, with Pastor Grainer's church, he wanted to sit you down and know if the doctrine was right before he would work with us. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. He asked me a couple of questions just to see what we believe. And you drove down and talked to him for a while. Yes. I, I came here uh, since October. I've come here like four times and, and talked to him. Man, I mean, just what an absolute blessing, you know. And, you know, when it comes to going to Costa Rica, when it comes to going to Zimbabwe, uh, you know, we always like to say you don't have to go to Zimbabwe, you can go to Subway to share the gospel. But when God calls you to do something, it's never good not to listen. And the best place to be, no matter where you are, no matter the situation, is in the will of God. Because we, what did we read in First Peter yesterday? All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Uh, that all, it, guess what? It means all. Uh, and it's important to remember that. I had to get a little uh, remark there in against Calvinism as well. But nonetheless, um, that all means all. And, and it is it is a fact. And you will suffer. But it is worth it. And I'll tell you this. The joy of spending time in worship. And I hope maybe I'll convince Josh to cut in some worship. You guys can hear us singing in multiple languages together. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing more beautiful uh, than that. And, you know, I want to thank, obviously, Nico for sitting down with us. Uh, you guys are used to him, though. Uh, and also, D David, so, uh, who I thought was David for so long. Uh, found you can out call it, me David. Bro. I'm looking no at a deer. Sorry, it just threw me off. I didn't even know that was out here. Or is that an antelope? I don't know. That's, That's a deer. That's a deer. That's okay. a male deer. I, this is what we're doing here in Costa Rica. But we want to thank you guys so much for joining us on this special edition with our brother in Christ, David, our brother in Christ, Nico, and myself, Chad Davidson. We praise God that you're back at home in the States if you are or whoever's listening around the world. We want to thank you guys and we pray that you are blessed. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you.